All right, I'm Tony Mormino with the Engineers HVAC Podcast with a super special episode here in the Phoenix Controls Factory in Acton, Massachusetts, and I'm here with George Valiant. How are you doing hey, today? Good, Tony. How are you doing? Good to see you. Appreciate you coming Thanks in. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. We're going to talk about these, these things right here, yeah. which are so called Phoenix Controls Valves, Phoenix right? Phoenix Controls Venturi Valve. Venturi Valve. So if you're watching this video and you're not familiar with what these are, these are critical environment air control valves. Did I say that properly? Good, yeah. Okay. Not too Good. bad for not, your first day on the job. <laughs> for the first day in the factory, but I really wanted to do this video because like me, you know, I've been in the industry for 25 years. I've heard of Venturi valves, mm -hmm. but I've never really held one, seen one, don't know what it's about. So why don't we take a few minutes, talk about what this is, when you would use it, why you would use it, and then we got a special video we're going to do on actually testing one of these to see what happens before it leaves the factory. Because these are for critical environments. Absolutely, right? yeah. This is not child's play. Nope, nope. So right. highly engineered product. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're looking at a 12-inch horizontal valve right here. Where do we want okay? to start? And so we can just start right here. So right? air comes in here. So this is the inlet. This is Let's the exhaust. Let's give them a side right? shot here. So air comes in here. Yep. And this is the outlet, right? So this is the Venturi. This is actually a diffuser style valve. So that transition that you see here, mm. based on the comb package, right? What we're doing is we're controlling the air, right? But the valve allows us to turn down the fan speed, right? By mm -hmm. tenfold, right? In addition to that, the controls that we have also, we can actually manipulate the position of the cone assembly within the valve. So this 12-inch valve will range from 90 CFM up to 1,500 CFM. Yeah. Regardless of the orientation, horizontal, vertical, up or vertical, down. Okay? Right, well, right. Well, so I saw some installed over there. They were, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the gotcha. orientation on the air stations, you'll see vertical we're testing or horizontal. Them. Exactly. Gotcha. Vertical, horizontal, vertical, down. Vertical, gotcha, up, gotcha. Okay, so gotcha. three orientations. And this in here, I call it a plunger. I don't you know call what the it a plunger, we word call it a spring package, okay? This a is the cone package, assembly okay. that allows us, once again, as you, you can see here, that shaft is going to move based on the command relative to changes in the lab space, whether the sash is opening and closing and so on and so forth. Okay. But pressure independence is really something that we want to talk about. As you hold that shaft, Tony, what's going to happen is as I pump this cone assembly, that's a change in the environment, exactly like someone came in right. through the lab, closed the door. Instantaneously, that change allowed the cone to compensate for that change in pressure, never consuming any energy right, at this point right. in time. It's only when they leave that door open, now that cone's gonna actually compensate for that. Okay, so here's where I was confused until I heard it five times. <laughs> so the position of this shaft by the actuator determines the amount of airflow we want into the, through this valve, correct. Since it has the spring in there, it's not dependent on the pressure. It's, it's not independent it's of the pressure. Pre so we exactly. set this to a specific position. Correct. So people could why that's important in labs, surgery suites. People are coming and going. Absolutely. Opening the doors, they're opening the sash. A lot of changes in that environment. Right? So we set this to be a certain CFM, and then the spring in here does its. Correct. Thing. And maybe right. we'll see a little yep. bit of that and in a that's, second. And that's all going to be commanded based on the environment changes, right? right the sash right. is going up. You may have multiple hoods. So all of that relative to the application that we're supplying. Because we're not only focused on just the supply and exhaust. We're looking at the entire application. So you might have multiple hoods in the lab space. Right, but you right. also have sufficient supply valves in there to make sure you're always getting enough supply air so that pressurization is always negative. Right. And you could have an extra exhaust valve, too. You like could have like three general the, exhaust, yeah. Yeah, general absolutely. exhaust. I learned yeah. about that earlier awesome. too. Awesome. <laughs> good. Look at you. <laughs> I am learning good. something while I'm here. Good. This is good. Good. So a couple things that we do is typically on a, on a supply application, what we'll do is we'll take this aluminum valve and we'll actually supply the uh, thermal barrier here. Let's pull that over here. Okay. So this is a more finished product. It's got the it controller. Is. It's got the actuator, and we'll talk about the actuators in a minute because depending on the application, you may have a high speed actuator, which we're going to look at over here. You Correct. may have a regular speed actuator, right, Nick? Regular speed, <laughs> Nick the cameraman reminded us that earlier. So, okay, go ahead, I'll so, shut up now. So yeah, so basically all your supply valves are gonna be coming out with this vapor barrier. Because of where it is in the plenum and the mm -hmm. air moving through that, right, the cool air in here, what's gonna happen is cause the valve to actually uh, condensate sure. because it's yeah. in the plenum, right? right? This vapor barrier, when we install it here, is ensuring in the maintaining the integrity that it's not gonna leak in the drop ceiling or the mm -hmm. ceiling. Now the intent is that they're supposed to wrap up to this valve, anything before or after this valve is on, right, on the right. contract to make sure it gets done. Full VAV, right, we have a regular speed actuator here, right, a back neck controller, 
In addition to that, all the labeling that we put in here allows us to have traceability through the entire process. From wow. the time we start yeah. to manufacture it, to test it, to the time it actually ships, it actually resides on the room schedule sheet so the rep knows exactly where they're standing. All that information is once again defined right there on the, the valve label here. Nice, okay, so just to recap, the actuator we were talking about earlier, so on this unit here, it was the chef we were looking at here is connected to the, now we got an actuator on it. Correct, basically. right, and so what'll happen is as we actually, the command, it'll actually move that pivot on, right? Yeah. But in addition to that, we still have the opportunity for pressure independence, right? So as you push on that cone assembly, you're still gonna see the dampening, right? Can we see that? Oh, nice. Right, so right. the actuator's position is to say, we want 1,000 CFM. Correct. Okay, then this, takes care of whatever differential difference in pressure in the space. Instantaneously changes as long as it, it does changes it. like that. Correct. And we, sh we did a video yesterday, and you can see it on our YouTube channel, HVAC-TV, where we have a cutaway of a unit, mm -hmm. and we're actually changing the pressure, and it just like exactly. changes like that. So right. now, in critical environments, that's important. So you have to have a unit, a valve designed to do that. Standard VV boxes sure. just can't react that sure. fast, right? right. Right, yeah. exactly. The other thing and the nice thing about it is that and when you did the red, red valve demonstration, mm -hmm. well, with the, what they were doing is changing actually the flow on the valve, right? So what mm -hmm. happened is you actually seen that cone change based on the changes in the pressure independence, mm -hmm. right? So that's exactly, the cone, the valve never changed, the actuator never changed the position of the cone. The cone compensated for that pressure. Right, drop, that, right? Just, this, just this part, the Correct. spring. That's correct. Right. Which yes. is a highly engineered spring, right? It's extremely highly engineered. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's, it's an extremely critical part. I mean, that, and that's one of the reasons why we do what we do here, Tony. Okay, let's, now let's talk about what, so when these leave the factory, they go through rigorous testing, adjusting, am I using that word right? Uh, it's characterization. We like to refer to it as characterization. Characterization? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay, characterization. Yes. All right, let's talk about that. All right. So. Every single valve is actually gonna end up on the air station. And what we're doing is we know, based on the design spec, this is a 12 inch valve, 90 to 1500 CFL, okay? okay? Customer, in this case here, this is actually going over to Japan. So what we have the capability of doing is converting it, depending on where it's going geographically, whether it's CFM, cubic mm -hmm. feet per minute, meters cubed per hour, or liters per second. And that's ah, what you're gotcha. seeing here. That, that's what that M3H is for. Gotcha. All right, so we, we actually change that for their, their capabilities. What we're gonna do is place the valve up on the air stations, and what we're gonna do is gonna run it through the exact design spec. Okay. So from 90 to 1500. Okay? Gotcha. And through that entire range, what we're gonna do is ensure that that valve is running plus or minus 5% through the entire design range. Now, through the entire range. Right, now the customer says, listen, I, you know, I don't have the capability to convert that to CFM right now, but if they were to say, listen, I want this to run from 300 to 800. Right, no right. I'm gonna go from 90 to 1500, I don't care. Because what I'm giving you is, I'm giving you all the capabilities that if you just decide that you wanna change the clamps later in the field, all you do is plug in, change the electronic clamps Got on it. the controller, nice. and you're off and running. Now this is, there's a fan somewhere. There's a fan. There's air, you can't tell on the video, but there's right. fan, there's air blowing on yeah. here. Yeah, and the glass ceiling here. Okay. Maybe we can get that later, right? We'll get that later. Right? Yeah. There's an anemometer device in there. There's a humidity sensor that's in there. And we'll what get that, that later. What Nick. that's doing is taking all the information, and what we're doing is actually verifying it at the inlet of the valve where the okay. pitot tube is, right? So highly precise, calibrated. Did you say NIST? NIST. NIST Am I traceable. saying that word yep. right? NIST traceable. Okay. Na NASA that means NASA. it's legit. It's legit, NB right. lab certification, okay. all of that to be compliant, to know that every single valve that comes off these ES stations is a highly tuned precision airflow device. Nice, which you just can't do in the field. No, no, right. I mean, it, you know, we've seen it from time to time when they do install and it's in the wrong orientation, we will send out a kit, or what we refer to as a reorientation kit, but they have to- So it's so it. precise, you need to know if it's gonna oh, be yes. installed horizontal Absolutely. or vertical, yes. or vertical yeah. upside down. Correct, right, so we're gotcha. badging it to make sure everything that's gonna actually, with the white and red is horizontal, if it's gonna be yellow, it's gonna be vertical up, and if wow. it's gonna be blue, it's vertical down. So it allows, from a commissioning standpoint, to streamline it when they're walking through that facility to be able to identify those labels to ensure that they're in the right orientation. So every valve that leaves here, and I've seen a lot leave here in two days, goes through this process. Absolutely, 100%. And you have it all documented, you know you can pull it up based on the serial number or whatever the number is. I have use. traceability for probably the last 40 years for every valve that has moved through that. Right, right. And that's not only just for the, the variable airflow, the VAV, mm -hmm. also constant volume. 
Gotcha. Constant volume valve, one flow, we put it on the so system. So the constant chair. volume valve doesn't doesn't have an actuator? Does not have an actuator. So it's just, you know, that's, yeah, got it. What you're commanding it to, it's locked in, it's got a, it's a, got a field adjustable on there, so we lock it in based on what you're commanding. Now you can yeah. make changes in the field at a later date and time, but right. it leaves here to the calibrated spec. So you know at point three, and correct me if I'm wrong, 0.3 to three inches of DP, it's gonna produce XCFM, is that how exactly the concept, the customer because wants. of the spring? Correct, correct. Moving the, any changes yeah. in, yeah, and any changes in that static pressure, that cone is gonna compensate. The cone, and yeah. And it's always gotcha. gonna make sure that it, it's it's at that flow. Now, I love it. you exceed three inches, the valve is probably gonna go run a little bit higher, probably anywhere from probably seven to eight percent, mm -hmm. but it's still controlling. It's still yeah. controlling. Three Three inches of differential pressure. Differential pressure. Correct. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's that's nice. the nice so thing about it. So simple. I love it. Yeah. Of course, I say it's simple. I don't have to figure out all the engineering behind right. it. But yeah. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about it because what happens is typically we'll see that first valve that's in the manifold. Mm -hmm. When that fan fires up, you're probably looking at six inches of static running across that thing. That cone's going to sit back there, and then as it settles out, it comes right into the gotcha. control, and that's everything downstream. So it, awesome. it's, it truly is a finely tuned, that's why we talk about application, not only just the valve, it's the application that we yeah, actually yeah. provide. Yeah, you know? for sure. So sinking all your supplies and exhaust and knowing all the changes with regards to how the hoods are actually reacting and so on right. and so forth. This is a full, what we refer to as like full VAV, high speed actuation, kind of in a wet chem application. Mm -hmm. What we have here. So wet chem would be like a chemistry lab where they actually have Liquid chemicals or yes. powder chemicals, something dangerous. Very much so. In a hood. Yep. And the hood opens up so you could have a huge face area. Absolutely. And so you need to be able to make sure you have that negative pressure when you open that up or when someone opens the door. That's correct. And we looked at that in your demo facility over here correct. earlier where yes. we had a smoke, you know, again, plug in the YouTube channel, but if you look at our YouTube channel, there's a great demo on there from their room over there that have a smoke generator in the hood. Yeah, and you open yeah. it up and it's still, yeah, Pulls it right really out. Really cool. Not huh? a problem. And that's within one second, right? So that's how quickly that actuator is moving. The fast act. So this was a regular actu actuator. Can Correct. we, Nick? Can you try and come over here and get a shot of the fast? I'm not you, sure I'm using the terminology right, but it's, yeah, high we speed. refer to it as high speed. High speed actuator. Got it. So that thing looks like it could lift a car. Probably. Yeah. So it's, it's, awesome. it is so smooth based on what's going on relative to the voltage potentiometer and the position of the arm. And that's where we're measuring the flow and yeah. also the actual um, feedback on that V pot. And one second, it, it could go within, from? Within one second. Awesome. Okay. Watch yourself. Nick. Nick, you're doing a great job. You haven't fallen over yet, so well, you, know, you get points. <laughs> When we come here to these factories, we it's like me and a guest and I'd grab, say, hey, you want to run the camera? <laughs> you get what you get here, but right. it's all good. This is great information, by the way. It's awesome. awesome. Good, good. Yeah, we're, we're excited to do it. I mean, uh, and again, we have six air stations that are capable of doing every size valve, you know, from an eight inch valve, but, and we're now introducing the six inch valve, which is going down to, uh, re remind me, Nick, how, how low? 30, 35 CFM, right? Wow. All the way up to 5,500 CFM. So is it a pretty small one? It's a six inch valve, yeah. I can put it in my, you know, my backpack if I leave here. Basically could, yes. <laughs> yeah. Take one to the office right. for more videos. Right, so actually stop by my office. I think I have one for you. Okay, great. All right, yeah. All right you heard it. Video, video proof. I don't even have one. Video proof. Uh, awesome. Any other questions? Yeah, so what's going on with the screen? Where, sure. Can you go through that real quick? Yeah, so what we're doing right now is actually we're going through the characterization curve, but in this case here, we're gonna test this valve at three different static pressures. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna bounce around in the static pressure here right now. What we're doing is we come in and we're sitting at roughly about uh, two inches of static here. And what you're seeing is based on the results, right? Because what we wanna do, I, I, I gotta remember, I think we're jumping from one inch to two inch to two and a half inches back down to one and a half Got inches. So it. we're really kind of exercising that cone somewhere, right? Because I mean, I could test them all at one inch, but I want those changes based yep. on static to make sure that that cone's gonna react. And that's the direct result of what you're seeing. All these green dots here are yep. saying, even as we change static, they're still, the valve is still compliant, plus or minus 5%. Wow, look at that. And now it's going up to? So that's the EFLO of 260, right? It uh, was right. at 90-ish, right? Yep. Which is right here. So now we're going up here, but look at how steady. So the valve, the actuator, sets the position. Correct. 
And then we're checking to see, okay, at this position, we want to know if we change the static. You got it. Where we settle in for Correct. CFM. Is that, that, did I get that right? Nailed it. Okay. Nailed it. Perfect. Yep. And nailed that's exactly it. what you're seeing here based on the different flows that we're testing into. Right. So okay. we know in the field, if you put this much voltage to the actuator, we know where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And we know what the CFM is because look at this. Yeah. Like yeah. there's no doubt like where the CFM is going to be, right? Right. Because we've right. tested it thoroughly in the, that's what I like about it. You leave here, it's verified. You don't have to worry about it in the field. You know at this voltage and you could pull it up and, and check it. Right. And, right? And, and, and at any point in time there was an issue with it, we have the data that's backed up on the network over 40 years of that, right? Right. So we can always pull it down. And it's the nice thing about it is, God forbid, it's the controller got damaged. I have all the information based on the production order number and the serial number. I can come over to the air station, plug into a new board, download that characterization, and get you the board yeah. without ever having to disrupt that application or stop what's going on in that application. And it all is predicated on the pressure independence. Absolutely. That's really the key here because it gives you that room to move no matter what the pressure is because right. of the tension of the pre-engineered spring. You know and because of this, you know where it's going to be. Exactly, right. And, I love and, it. and the nice thing about it is, you know, history has shown we're only using about 60% of that valve. So we never go to the extremes, right? And we always oh, suggest okay. that you yeah. upsize the valve because it's going to run better for you over time. And, you know, as we had talked about, I would love to get back out in front of the customers to be able to go out there and certify this product. But once it's installed, it never needs any any maintenance or anything like that. Yeah, so yeah. We've, we've proven that over the last 30 plus years. Pretty cool. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Facility, Phoenix Controls, come check it out. Their demo areas, they have a life sciences demo area and a healthcare demo area. I'm calling them demo areas, probably demo rooms demo or... Suites. Demo suites. Demo right. suites. Right. So That's the word I was looking for. Chem, life safety, BSL-3, and then the healthcare suite. Right. So if you want to learn about critical environment control, this is definitely the place to do it. They, I think the suites are relatively new. Yeah, within the probably about, I want to say, 12 months. 12 yeah. months. Yeah. 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 So, you know, reach out to your rep, get on their website. If you're in the Carolinas, call Insight Partners and uh, come on up here. It's free. Come on up here and learn about, We'd love to have learn you. from the experts. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Excellent job. Appreciate you. you. All right. Thank you.